Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, CaltonCutlery.com. Today I'm going to shoot, shoot a quick video on um, the the base or the, the blade holder that I made to go along with my stereo microscope. Um, this video is mostly for the fellow that showed me his microscope and um, um, I was so excited about it that I, I had to, to get one on my own. Um, the, the big problem with that is that that fella has got insanely steady hands. Um, my hands, you know, I've, they've got a shake to them. And most of the time I don't really notice it, but when I get up underneath a, this microscope, um, I have a real hard time using anything over maybe about 50 power. Um, you know, I mean, I can see, but the my shakies are, are so bad that, uh, that I'm not seeing what I want to see. Um, and he was just hand holding razors up underneath uh, his microscope and I just can't do that. So I ended up uh, coming up with this, uh, it's not really a vise, a uh, blade holder maybe, something like that. And what it is, is a bowling ball cut in half and set in a dog dish. And then you cover the face of the bowling ball with uh, blue painter's tape just to give a little bit more contrast. Uh, add a couple of pins and a chunk of modeling clay and that's pretty much it. Um, you can slide the whole base around um, pretty easily if you need to. Um, if you wanted to put like a, another block of wood up underneath here and, and make like a you know a sliding rail system you could. Um, but this works pretty good just the way it is. So I'll go ahead and bring the camera in a little bit closer and take let you have a, a better look at it. Okay, so these, these scopes have got a pretty good uh, working distance um, as far as your, uh, uh, maybe they call it the focal plane. Anyway, the distance from, you know, the lens to your workpiece is, is a pretty large distance there. So I just grabbed one of my, my personal razors here. Now, without the pins, just put the clay off to the side you would turn the scope on or the light on and you can just lay the razor down on the maybe that lights too much yep it's too much lay the razor down look through your eyepieces or if you've got the the camera mount on it you know whichever and then you know you can tilt the bowling ball up and down to see whatever kind of angle that you want and then either slide the whole base or since you've got such a large surface area I think I measured this at eight, as eight and a half inches in diameter you can just slide the razor back and forth now um, if you have the bowling ball set uh, you know pretty uh, parallel to the lens then as you move the razor back and forth you won't I mean you'll still have to adjust your your focus a little bit but it's not too bad um, when the pins what that's for is once you start getting up in angles see there the razor starts sliding once you start getting to too big of an angle then what you would do is stick your pins in here and these are just uh, um, quarter inch uh, brass uh, pin stock and then work your uh, your modeling clay down to where it's about the right size seems like I'm fiddling around an awful lot this morning and then you can use that to kinda help hold when you come up to more extreme angles. This is actually the first time I, uh, I just drilled those pins this morning and haven't really used them, but that was kind of the basic idea. So that way you can, um, you can, you can still slide it back and forth to, to go really extreme angles if you want to. Um, but most of the time, um, I've just been using it without the pins. Just set your razor or your pocket knife blade or whatever it is that you're working on up underneath there and then you know it holds it nice and steady. 
With this setup, uh, this scope will go uh, up to 180 power. Like I said, I wasn't really able to use it much past about 50 because of the shake in my hands. But this holds everything really nice and steady. Um, so I'm really excited to start using some of those higher powers and being able to, to see any more uh, out of them. If you do decide to make one of these, um, when I, I just uh, had an old bowling ball laying around, probably picked it up somewhere or other. And the bowling ball wouldn't fit into my bandsaw. So, there we go. Um, what I did was I just used a uh, carpenter's handsaw. I don't suggest anybody else doing that. Um, it took me all afternoon to cut that bowling ball in half. And if you're interested, that's what the inside of a that's what the inside of this bowling ball looks like. So I just set it in uh, a couple of sandbags um, on a, a my shop stool. Put a couple of sandbags on the bottom, set the bowling ball, and started cutting. Um, I was really hoping that the uh, the wide blade of the carpenter saw would help uh, the cut track, you know, pretty much straight through the bowling ball, and it did. In fact, it was so smooth that I didn't even um, didn't grind or, or face off or sand uh, the face of the cut. So it worked out pretty well. It just took a long dang time. So. If you decide to build one of these, uh, and then it's just a, a dog dish um, that the bowling ball sets in, so a bowl that'll you know fit around there. If you do decide to do this and you find a better way to cut a bowling ball in half, not that I think you would have to do this very often. Um, you know, if, if you find a better way, let us know about it. Uh, the other one that I made up, the first one that I made up, is this. And it worked kind of okay. Um, okay, so I took a uh, a rubber ball from uh, I think Target, probably five inches in diameter. Uh, poked a hole in it, let all the air out. Cut a hole in it large enough to fit a speaker magnet in there. And then I had a whole bunch of uh, scrap lead. Um, they were old uh, pellets from a pellet trap. Mixed them up with some plaster of Paris, poured it all into the, the ball, and you can see the weight kind of flattened out the bottom as it was setting up, and then set the speaker magnet in the top, cleaned off the whole thing, and then set it in a half of a, I think this is a four inch uh, fern co. They use these for uh, booting up like sewer lines. And it works pretty good, you know, you can, I had this mounted on a piece of wood, uh, and that way it would slide across the, the bench top real easy. The problem with this, and I didn't notice this until I started working with it, is you use the magnet to hold the blade in position so that, you know, you don't have to kind of move it around and get it balanced right like you do on this one. And that works really great, but what happens with the magnet is that it magnetizes your razor. Once you magnetize the razor, now if you're in a, a clean environment, um, you know, it might not be such a big deal, but, you know, this is a knife making shop, so I've got, you know, metal dust and, you know, pretty much everywhere. I mean, you can't really fight it a whole lot. And that magnet will pick up that metal dust. Um, and then once you magnetize your razor, that metal dust will stick to your razor. Um, not only that, but I think, and I'll have to use the, the bigger scope just to double check, but I think once that razor is magnetized, you put it on your stones and you start, you know, taking metal off the razor with the stone. Well, if the razor's magnetized, it's going to want to pull those metal filings right back to the edge. In fact, Every time I looked up underneath the microscope using this holder with a razor that I was sharpening, there would always be medical metal particles on the edge. So I picked up a little uh, demagnetizer from Home Depot. Um, I haven't used it yet because I quit using this uh, magnet base and that problem seemed to go away. 
but I've got it there on hand just in case it happens again. So um, I would suggest not using a magnet to hold your blade on whatever kind of holder setup that you do. Um, like I said, that, that modeling clay and the, um, you know, the pins uh, will work pretty good. Um, I guess you could also put some modeling clay up underneath the blade and then put, you know, put another bit up underneath the scales to kind of help it, help hold it at whatever angle that you're after. <coughs> but anyways, so anyhow, this is the, um, the bowling ball, uh, setup for the, the microscope. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to say about that is that. So you do have the base that you can just set the razor on or knife or whatever, scissors, whatever it is that you're, work, you're looking at. But these things have got such a large range of motion, you know, that goes clear up to there and then I can loosen up the clamp and then bring the whole head of it up, you know, clear up to here. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you probably could. Yeah, see this whole thing right here, you can lift it clear up to there. And that's without putting like any blocks or anything up underneath the stand. So you've got a huge range of motion here. Well, once you have this bowling ball set up, if you're wanting to take pictures or really examine one area, then you can go ahead and, you know, use the, use the base setup like this. But if you're just scanning an edge, you know, it just, uh, I mean, you can still hand hold it if you want to. Or, you know, put the, um, put the blade on there and then slide it back and forth. I mean, it's, it's really turning out to be a pretty versatile base. Anyway, I guess if you have one of these microscopes and you're looking for a, a base like that, grab a bowling ball, find a better way to cut it in half. Um, you know, put it in a, a dog bowl to be able to, you know, to swivel it around um, and see if it helps you hold a little bit steadier. Hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you next time.